Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the University of Saskatchewan. I would like to thank you all for joining us in this event to celebrate Black History Month. First, I would like to recognize that the University of Saskatchewan is a Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Metis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Metis ancestors of this place, and we affirm our relationship with one another. My main task today, as you have heard, is to introduce our keynote speaker. It is my pleasure and privilege to introduce Ms. Carol Raphael Boyd. Carol was born on a farm west of Saskatoon in 1942. Carol and her siblings were the only black children wherever they lived until 1959, when people of African ancestry began moving to Regina. Carol has been active in a number of organizations, including the Saskatchewan African Canadian Heritage Museum, where she's the volunteer executive director, the Bob Adams Foundation for the Love of Mavi organization. She attends Gateway Christian Fellowship Church, where she also volunteers. Carol has lived and worked in the United States and Canada in various capacities. She has worked as a clerk registered psychiatric nurse, as well as a registered social worker. She retired in 2005 after 33 years in the Saskatchewan government in social services and corrections and public safety. Carol is very accomplished as a track and field athlete and has been an inspiration to many of us. She is a master's track and field athlete having taken up competition at the age of 50. She was inducted in the Regina Sports Hall of Fame in 19, 2014 and Canadian Masters Athletics Hall of Fame in 2012. In 2018, at the age of 76, Carol was selected as the World Masters Association Female Athlete of the Year. This is an incredible achievement. Last year, she was awarded the Sovereign Volunteers Medal and Honorary degree of laws from the University of Regina. Regarding our family history, Carol serves the role of family historian and has been working on our genealogy since 1982. Our great grandfather was a descendant of freed slaves in the state of Virginia. Carol's grandfather was born in Iowa and left for Regina in 1906. Our father, Carl, was born in 1907 and was probably the first black child to be born in Regina. And finally, Carol is a proud great-grandmother of four. Now, please join me in extending a warm welcome to Carol Raffiette Boyd. <laughs> Thank you, George, for that introduction. I'm going to uh, share a uh, a PowerPoint with you and then I will take some questions after that. So, okay, so what I'm going to do today is talk about the early history of African descent people in Saskatchewan. And um, my agenda will be first talking about how the, what we call African Canadian Black History Month came about in Saskatchewan and in Canada and elsewhere. And um, I'll talk about our museum. We call it SACM for short and uh, some information about the United States, some Canada, and then about Saskatchewan and then life in Saskatchewan. So here we go. Black History Month in the United States, it began in 1976 and Canada it began in 1995. And we both uh, celebrated in February, where as in the United Kingdom, it began in 1987 and they celebrated in October. In Canada, the former politician uh, Canadian, the Honorable Jean Augustine, put the motion forward in the House of Commons in 1995, and Canada formally recognized fam February as Black History Month at that time. About SACM, uh, it was founded in 2002, and that was mainly because several of the African descent organizations were doing uh, Black history information, and they discovered that really uh, we needed to know more about the heritage in Saskatchewan because a lot of people didn't know that people had been here in Saskatchewan uh, since the uh, before the 1900s. 
We were incorporated in 2004, and our first event was in 2005. Our mission is to preserve and celebrate the heritage of people of African ancestry in Saskatchewan. And we do that by having our virtual museum uh, at www.sacom.org. And a lot of the people don't really, aren't still here, but uh, any, any contribution they did to Saskatchewan, we want to recognize them in our museum. Our projects have been an honoring tree, which I'll talk about in a moment, and a book. And they're part of the living, that tree was a part of the living heritage component of this centennial celebration of the 1910 settlement of people of African ancestry in Saskatchewan. And they, they, those are the ones that came up to the Maidstone area. We've also had a project of played and stayed, and hopefully some of you've seen that on Monday nights um, of the African descent players who played here from 1963 to 2018. They played and then they stayed, but some have since left, since left like Don Narcisse and Matt Dominguez, but we're, we still had interviewed them while they were here. Our honoring tree, hopefully you've seen that in Wascana Park in Regina, and that's south of the Royal Saskatchewan Museum and north of the uh, legislature. And we figured that's a, a legacy of, for an inclusive community in Regina through public art and heritage. Now, many people's strength is Saskatchewan model and the Honoring Tree Project, we feel is a life-giving legacy that celebrates that diversity. And we are the Saskatchewan African Canadian Heritage Museum and we have a lot of partners that we work with and we're so blessed to have that. And our vision is to honor all pasts and build new relationships. And then that honoring tree, we, we look at it as kind of a, a Statue of Liberty. It's our beacon of welcome to anyone coming into Saskatchewan and especially Regina. Now the children's book, it's based on a pioneer doctor, first, the first known doctor in Saskatchewan of African ancestry. And Dr. Shad is the grandson of Abram Dor Shad, an influence, influential activist in Ontario. And Dr. Shad's heritage is from the United States where his family were free and came to Canada. And so in 1883, and our book is, is based on that. But I have to say that as I was looking at some of the names that are on the list, I didn't find out about Dr. Shad until 1984. Like I was born here and I, I never had heard of him until a social worker from Melfort who, uh, where Dr. Shad did his doctor, uh, doctoring, is uh, that's when I found out about Dr. Shad. So uh, I hope that yeah, you're there and listening. Oh. This is the book that was written, um, Little Shad. And uh, it's, it's based on Kwanzaa and I'll talk about that in a sec too. But it also has been translated into French. So we're, we're grateful for that. So our annual activities are February. We have, we through African Canadian Black History Month, and we've called it uh, because we, we consider black not a race that we would start calling it the African Canadian Black History Month. And um, in June is our newcomers picnic and, and the AGM, which we, because of COVID, we haven't had our newcomers picnic yet. And July 1st is Canada Day Cultural Village and, and December we celebrate Kwanzaa. So these events are, African Canadian Black History Month. On January 30th, we had our launch. And since 2017, we've have been having at the McKenzie Art Gallery. They're one of our partners. And this year, the display was of the Italian presence in Ethiopian Eritrea in the late 19th and early 20th century. So if you're ever in Regina, go, go see the display. And on February 26th, we're going to have a wrap up at, uh, it's an event hosted by our patron, Lieutenant Governor Russ Morassity. And um, so, but in the meantime, in between January 30th and the end of February, we're doing a lot of presentations. And I must say, I think this is the first one we did with the University of Saskatchewan. So thank you for inviting us. And on Tuesday, June 30th at the Honoring Tree in West Canna Park near the Royal Saskatchewan Museum, we will have our uh, newcomers picnic and Hot dogs and water, water will be supplied and we hope people will come there. On the, the next day in July the 1st, we will have the cultural village and, and there we've had just everybody, the Caribbean dancers, the Chinese dancers, Ukrainian, Amedi singers, jazz singers, gospel choirs, rap singers, uh, Ugandan dancers, uh, East Indian sword dancing and 
we it's really a, a cultural event where uh, people can come and, and watch uh, all the different cultures showing their wares. On December the 26th, we have Kwanzaa, Celebration of Family, Community and Culture, and that's where people get together and it's open to the general public where we talk about the principles of unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. And we're really just learning about that here in, with our group, yeah, with SACM. Okay, so now talking about uh, in Canada here, between 1905 and 1912, more than 1,000 black men, women, and children traveled to Alberta and Saskatchewan. So in 1906, of course, my grandfather and uh, grandmother and my uncle came from Iowa, from Oskaloosa, Iowa. And, uh, and uh, my dad's uncle also came too. And in 1910, my great grandmother came from Oklahoma with her family and, and their, her husband, but I never did meet him. And they, but they, they were booked to go to Maidstone, but they ended up in Amber Valley in Alberta. So I have the connection to the Amber Valley, but not so to the Maidstone group. But my grandmother, my great grandmother moved to North Battleford in about 1917 and uh, she raised my mother. So uh, I knew a lot of the people up in North Battleford. But in 1912, an, or an order in council was passed, but never acted on and it's said for a period of one year from and after the date hereof, the landing in Canada shall be, and the same is prohibited of any immigrants belonging to the Negro race, which race is deemed unsuitable to the climate and requirements of Canada. And uh, Bruce Shepard wrote a book called uh, Deemed Unsuitable that uh, talked about that. So in the United States, where did they come from? Um, so of course there was, my great grandmother was born in Texas and, in 1876, I believe it was, or, and um, she was, the, the, they didn't know they were, that slavery had ended and she was treated as a slave until she was older. She had scars on her back from being beaten, but she had moved in, and married in Oklahoma and that's where they came from. The Iowa is where my dad came from, but a lot of other people, most many come from, came from Oklahoma, but Kansas, uh, Missouri, different places. and. Uh, some went back. Where they settled in Saskatchewan, we're just finding out too that there's been people just all over the place. And of course, Dr. Shad in Malfort. Um, my family was uh, west of Rosetown. Well, first we were in Regina, of course, but then west of Rosetown. And um, there were people on the border. There was a woman down in Piapot that had come from the United States. And uh, further north, but I'll, I'll talk about that when I talk about the census too, where people were. So we were everywhere there. So, but Maidstone was the, the big place where they came from. And Maidstone is between Lloydminster and North Battleford there. And just north of Maidstone, uh, I can't remember exactly how many miles, maybe 12 or something, is where yeah, they were. So this, there was struggle and survival for those people that came, but the largest migration came from Oklahoma territory to Saskatchewan. There was some fight against the racist federal legislation preventing black Im immigrants. And um, what I was told that my husband's family who were, they ended up in Alberta, when his grandfather tried to come across on the train, he had been drinking and they wouldn't allow him in. So he never did make it to Canada. There was the realities of climate and settlement and, their, their, and the reaction of the surrounding community was, for some, it wasn't kind. And so there was an impact on education and religion, but there is a legacy of early African Canadian settlement there up there in Maidstone and elsewhere. And I already talked about this order in council, August 12th, oh, it's 1911, that they, that they put that in there, but it, uh, wasn't passed, I'm grateful for that. So our census in, uh, for, in Saskatchewan, of course in 1901, we weren't a province yet. And uh, the records show there were only six in, uh, in Saskatchewan, which was the Northwest Territories at that time. And um, I'm just gonna check my notes here. And of course, in Manitoba, there were 70 already. And I think that had a lot to do with the railroad. And um, an interesting thing is, is happening. There's 
the CBC is putting on a, a show called The Porter and uh, there will be some things, it was, it was taped in, in Manitoba, but it was shows that they were really in Montreal. In 1906, it didn't show the racial origin, just listed people. In 1911, of course, there were uh, uh, 311, and uh, they listed them as 27 African and 284 Negro. In 1916, there was 497, and they were listed as seven African, 480 Negro, and one colored. Now, my family, in 1916, they were on the farm. They were listed as French. Um, in 1921, there was 338, and they were listed as 23 African plus 317 Negro. My aunt Ina, who I will talk about, she was a teacher who came from my great aunt Ina, came from Iowa. She was listed as French, and her brother Goldie was listed as Scotch. And I in 1926, there were 338 of which six were listed as African, 300 as Negro and two as colored. So we had all kinds of names throughout uh, history there. And then there's the, the amounts that were in Alberta and BC, if you saw those, if you didn't get those, I can share that with you later. And from 1916 on, the majority were in the Maidstone North Battleford area. But however, there were a few listed in Humboldt, Maple Creek, Moose Jaw, Prince Albert, Regina, Saskatoon, and Weyburn. And um, I still want to do some research on some of those people. So the people at, that moved up to Maidstone, they built a Shiloh church in, in uh, we, I think we've had it listed two different times. I think it was in 1911, the Shiloh Baptist Church was built. It was a one room building constructed of poplar logs. And this was a, considered to be the center of the community for black settlers and we, was used for multiple uh, gatherings. I, and I don't remember going there, but I do remember many of the people from the Maidstone area coming to our home. Um, we were the only, like the Lafayette's were the only black family in the Rosetown area. But because my grandmother lived near there in North Battleford, some of the people would come to our house and, uh, what, and we'd get to see uh, quite a few of them from that area. The, the Shiloh Church, it was closed in the 1940s, but it was restored in the 1970s. And in 1901, it was de designated as a heritage site. And um, it was near the Maidstone. And it was last used in 1945. And in 1991, it was, as I said before, it was designated municipal heritage property. And 2018, it was designated a provincial heritage property. And so in 2019, um, the, we had the celebration up there and many of the descendants showed up for that from, uh, from Canada and the United States. And the, uh, Plaque reads, in 1910, 12 families founded Saskatchewan's first and only African American farming settlement in the rural municipality of Eldon. Mm -hmm. These families and others that followed came seeking land and freedom from the ra racial segregation of their native Oklahoma. In 1911, they built this simple one room, hewed log meeting house that served as a place of worship and community gathering. The Shiloh Cemetery was established in 1913 as a place for their traditional burial customs. And despite racism that also existed in Canada, these African-Americans pioneers persevered and became respected members of the community. And they are still remembered as the Shiloh people after this rustic log church where they once worshiped. And uh, it was kind of neat being there for that uh, celebration. The school, so in 1913, the petition was created for the to have a local school district. And the Shiloh community was kind of split on that. Most were in favor of an inclusive school for all the kids in the community to go. Um, but uh, the local white community favored segregation. So in, there was an appeal to the Dep Department of Education. In 1915, the MLA law created a segregated school. But by the 1920s, the school became integrated. So I just wanted to mention about my Aunt Ina, that's her on the right there. 
She came to Canada in 1920 to teach at Maidstone and taught there till 1925. She was fluent in German and she married a local farmer from the, the uh, Shiloh people whose ha last name happened to be Farmer. And Oskaloosa is where my dad went to school. Those, those two in the back that you can see that are persons of color, they're my dad's sisters and his two brothers are in the front there. And, um, and I, I think that is about 1934 or so, somewhere in there. I don't know if it says that. But um, prior to that, my, in 1925, my aunt Ina applied to come to teach at this school. And the chairman of the board said, there's no way any black woman is going to teach my children. And uh, she wasn't allowed. So she and her husband, uh, she was quite upset about that. So she went to Brazil. She thought she'd be accepted there. And we lost track of her, although I did find her death notice in 1954, I think it was, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And it showed that she was a prof said professor, but some people tell me that's Spanish for teacher. And this is the school in 1970 when we had our first family reunion. Most of the people in that picture are from the community but because there was only 99 of us at that time and now there's uh, over uh, you know two or three hundred I think and um, what's interesting is that a, a sign was put up called the Oskaloosa Road and so you, that's between Rosetown and Kindersley on the number seven highway and so that road there that would lead to our family farms all, Five of my, my dad and four uncles all had family farms. What's left there now is my brother, who will soon be uh, 90, and uh, one cousin, who they still have farms there. And um, although my brother lives in town now, and there, my uncle from my oldest uncle, he has a farm there that my brother looks after. And uh, so there's still some people out there. And then another uncle's children, has a house there that they're renovating to have Christmases and things there. So it's kind of exciting to see that road because I attended school there that it was a one room schoolhouse. And my first year of school, I attended there. There were only five of us left and it was all my brothers and sisters. And I have great memories of, of starting school there and, and walking that one and a half mile to there sometimes. I remember my last day I did, and it was quite a story about my last day of school there. Um, then we had, we had to travel to Anglia, and, which was seven and a half miles and often had to walk home. And I had a nephew tell me that, Auntie, I'm tired of you telling me how you had to get up before you went to bed to walk 10 miles to school. So uh, lots of good memories there. Here's some pictures of my family. That tall, handsome man is my dad his mother and his father, and then my aunts and uncles when they were little ones. And I, I'm thinking that was about 1931 that that picture was taken. I wanted to tell you, let you know that in World War I, there were people from Saskatchewan, who uh, people of African descent who uh, were in the First World War. My great uncle was too, but he, he was out of uh, Amber Valley at that time. and. Uh, there's, there's a whole thing coming up about the number two battalion. These people served there. They were sent over there mostly to work on the railroad. And apparently they were sent without any guns to protect themselves. And that's that, what happened with, uh, in, in those days. And also in the Second World War, my, my Uncle Glenn on the left and my Uncle Earl, and uh, they served. My Uncle Glenn, and he tells me that he could only be a cook. They wouldn't allow him to do anything else. And my uncle Earl didn't talk much about the war. I, I never heard anything about the war from him, but I think my son had heard a couple of things from him. Some other black history is the Indian Head Rockets. They are going to be inducted to the Saskatchewan Baseball Hall of Fame this year. That was an all black baseball team that came out of Florida and then they started coming from other places. Also just to note Satchel Page was up here playing baseball in a uh, Seaman, Saskatchewan at a, some in event that they had here. Uh, for those of you who are old enough to know who Satchel Page is. And, um, but two of the men that are probably in this picture, Nate 
Bates, uh, Nat Bates, and um, another man, Willie Reed, they're living in California, and Nat Bates is now 90 years old. When he left the, the team, he went back to the United States, to uh, Richmond City, California. He ended up becoming a mayor there for several years and still now is on the city council. We're hoping he'll come up for that uh, uh, the, um, Hall of Fame induction. So that's basically what we're about. And uh, just what inspires us, I want to uh, quote Martin Luther King, through many dangers, toils and snares, we have already come. Those greats that brought us safe this far and grace will lead us home. And when we allow freedom to ring and we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, hamlet from every state and every city, that's uh, what inspires us. And uh, what also another quote is from Pierre Trudeau, the former prime minister, the past is to be respected and acknowledged but not to be worshiped. It is our future in which we will find our greatness. So that is my information there. And I'm open to any questions. Thank you so much, Carol. I'm just gonna change the settings so that if there are some questions that people will be able to write them into the chat. Um, so I do welcome anyone, if you'd like to ask a question, um, you can, raise your hand, um, unmute yourself, come on video if you'd like, um, or you can write it into the chat. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, so uh, one thing I've noticed about um, African Canadian history uh, in Saskatchewan particularly is people often are very surprised about it. I'm wondering um, what your reaction to that feeling is and um is i yeah i guess i'm wondering what your reaction to that that feeling of surprise is uh well for somebody who's interested in here history i don't mind being asked the question and and i would i would tell them you know i would i'm from regina but i was uh born in uh in rose town the rose town area and they say, but really, where did you come from kind of thing? Or where did your parents come from? And, and, I would, and I'd love to tell them, you know, that my family came here in 1906 and, and all that kind of thing. But I have a nephew. Um, it, it, it's all, everything is in the eyes of the beholder. Because my nephew, he, he gets asked and, and they would, he, he would say, well, I, where'd you come from? He'd say, Regina. Well, no, no, really, where'd you come from? Well, I, I from Regina, whatever. And uh, after several questions, he would then say, from Africa, <laughs> so that because uh, it, it annoyed him. And I understand that a lot of people do get annoyed about that, and, and we do get asked it. But, it. but it's an opportunity, I feel, to let people know that people have been around here for a long time. And so it's, it's uh, but it, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because, like, I didn't know about a lot of people that were here before. I thought it was just us and the kind of the North Battleford people and the few others. So um, I found that, like, I was, I was brought up, we were the only Black family. Of course, my uncles and aunts, and that were, they're up the road. But my, my parents told me that if people call you a name, and that was usually the, I guess, the N-word, that it's because they feel bad about themselves. And so I really took that to heart. And for me, the saying to sticks and stones will break your bones and names will never hurt you just really helped me throughout my life. Because um, like as a, as a kid, I think my older brothers and sisters, I had six of them. If there were any people that were calling us names, they must have taken care of it. Because by the time I came along, nobody was calling me names. And uh, but I do know that for my children, my grandchildren, it's a different story now. They, they, um, they've experienced a lot more than I ever did. And uh, for me, I see name calling as ignorant people. I just walk away from them or um, say to them, not funny or whatever, and ignore them because I, I still believe that it's hurting people that try to hurt others. So I hope that answers, but uh, maybe George could say something because um, I know the people have, have, that have come in, in recent years, they, they get asked weird questions, George. Yeah, I get asked pretty much all the time. <laughs> I can't remember 
um, a month or so, I don't get asked, oh, and where, where is home for you? I said, you mean where I was born or which is my country? Because I am Canadian. And I say that um, I tried to give them information to educate them. I say, I was born in Kenya and I migrated to Canada to school at first and then decided to live in Canada and I became Canadian. So I've lived here longer than I lived in Kenya. They say, oh, and then they, the other strange questions are usually about, uh, well, if you are from Africa, uh, I know someone called um, <laughs> Dele from Nigeria and I'm, I try to tell them, it's like me telling you that I know someone from Nova Scotia or some or PEI. It's, it's an opportunity to educate people. And a lot of times, especially when I lived in Ontario, they thought that everybody who was black came from the Caribbean because at that time, about 30 years ago, there was a bigger uh, population from the Caribbean and they are very popular in the culture. So anyway, that's a snapshot of my experiences. Um, there are quite a few questions in the chat, so I, I think I'll call some attention to those. Um, from Janelle Poapsikonius, she said, I live very close to Maidstone. Oklahoma is the home of many Indigenous nations who are related and in alliance with my nation, the Niahau, Niahau, sorry, um, Cree. Do you have any stories or linkages to our communities? We must have we must have, you are so close by. <laughs> okay, I don't personally, because uh, my mom passed away in 1955 and, and I didn't even know that there were reserves around our area. But um, I do believe that my cousins who were up in, they were in Glenbush, just north of uh, North Battleford, that some of them married into to some of the families and that were uh, indigenous in that area. So, um, but I've kind of, I'm in contact with my cousins, but I don't know their full story, but I do know that uh, they have married uh, some peoples from the area. Um, can, um, from Ann Liang, she asked, can you tell us a bit about your research process? You have so many stories and photos. How did you collect it all? Well, we do a lot of work with the Saskatchewan Genealogical Society and uh, with archives. And um, just a lot of people contact us and say, well, we knew this family that was there. And so then we have to start researching um, just anywhere that we can find that information, but some of it is in the archives and, and uh, the Genealogical Society helps us out. Um, there's a question from Trina Crawford. She wanted to know how can our schools best support Black History Month and the contributions to Canadian history all year long? Okay, so one of the things that we're doing with a whole lot of other organizations is we're going to be putting forward a, a proposal to get that black history into the schools from grades one right through to university. So um, we're working on that. So when you hear about it, you could write a letter or whatever and support our effort to get that into the schools. Thank you. Um, and I uh, was just calling some attention to the amazing virtual museum that you um, are the executive director of um, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the museum and maybe some of the goals that the museum has for the future? Okay, well, the, the main goal is to, is to share the information about the uh, contribution of people of African descent. And, um, and I see someone is asking about the honor tree. I don't have that information available to me. We put out a bid for many people to have an art design for it. And they choose that one. And if you go to our website, you'll be able to find out what the honoring tree was all about. But um, our goal is to, to recognize people of African descent. So, but we do all, all kinds of other things. We go and speak to groups. We, um, we have those events 
that we have and at those events that is an as an opportunity for us to share information we're also going to be going out to two museums every month out throughout the um, the province and having our displays there we have some pop-up banners and and uh, fact sheets and different things like that so we'll be out there and uh, if that museum wants us to come out and, and have a, a presentation, we will do that while the, our displays are out there. So if you're involved in a museum and you want us out into your area, just let us know. But then we're working with the Museums Association of Saskatchewan to, to get the displays out there. Right now, the displays are here in Regina at the Mackenzie Art Gallery and uh, at the Government House. Wonderful. I have um, a comment here from Betty Matori. Thank you very much, Carol. Your presentation was very enlightening and inspirational. How can persons from African descent living in Saskatchewan do, or what uh, do to promote the history while reaching future greatness? Well, I think most people are willing to talk to groups and tell tell you about um, our experiences and. Uh, anything that you, you want to hear about the history, like the Mays family there, that's Maddie Mays, who is one of the people that uh, was with the Shiloh people. She was a, um, a midwife out there in the, in the community and her descendants are all over the place, but uh, her, one of the grandchildren, Crystal Mays is there right there in the city of Saskatoon. She has a lot of information that she could share with you. Um, and um, the one daughter is a veterinarian out in the Elrose area. And uh, of course, you've heard about Reuben Mays, most of you. And he's um, what, the first, I think, person of African descent from Saskatchewan to play in the NFL. So yeah, no, contact us and we'll gladly share anything with you anytime. I think there's a lot of interest in um, the museum itself Carol, there's another question here from Malvina Rafko. Um, she wanted to know, are there plans for um, the museum to have a building, a physical location? Because right now, um, if many don't know in the audience, it's a virtual museum, right? So Yeah, and to, to have a, a building, usually you need to have some artifacts. Right now, if there are any artifacts, they would be in the Shiloh church. Uh, but otherwise, we don't really have any artifacts. We were given some spurs because of a cowboy uh, in one of the, the towns here. And we haven't got him on the website yet because we're still trying to research him. So that's the only thing we have is some spurs. Uh, the city of Regina wanted to give us some medals from the Ku Klux Klan to uh, have in our, our display. We're not sure if how, how we would display that. But those would be the only two things that we would have as far as artifacts. Um, and so by placing our displays in the museums throughout Saskatchewan, we're hoping that, that, will, that those are the museums that will help us spread the message. Um, oh, we have a grade five um, classroom that's joined for the presentation. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Let's see here from Sithiko Zali. I apologize if I have just completely demolished your name. I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, but there's a, a message here. Thank you for sharing your family history with so much joy. For Black Africans, spreading a culture of love is important. Thank you again for contributing to the Black History Month. I have found indigenous people very welcoming, kind, and more accepting to me as an African woman. Thank you yes. for sharing that. There, yes, there's one, there's one thing about uh, the relationship with the people of African descent and uh, people of uh, the indigenous people. And sad to say, um, because of um, how some of my nephews and nieces and look they've been um thought of as indigenous and treated worse be, being thought of as an indigenous person than as a person of african ancestry and that uh that's really um uh, sad uh, i have i have a niece who's when they thought she was indigenous 
uh, they were extremely rude to her. And yet uh, she didn't experience that when they knew that she was black. Um, do we have any more questions or comments from the group? Hope I didn't miss any. They were coming in fast and furious. <laughs> um, so Carol, given the work that the museum is doing, do you see, what kind of role do you see um, for institutions like the university um, of Saskatchewan or the University of Regina in the work that the museum is doing? Well, sharing our history in any way that they can and uh, especially supporting that the education will be, they will be, they will educate teachers about the history so they can go out to the schools and and be um, proficient in teaching about black history that's one thing that they can do and we hope they'll support us in our effort of getting that out there um, i'm just double checking well if there are no more questions. Um, I just, I, I wanna say a huge thank you to you for um, joining us today. I, I've learned so much just in the amount of time that I've been involved in planning for Black History Month this year and in your talk and exploring the museum website. So for me personally, it's been quite a, an awesome learning experience and and I look forward to more. <laughs> okay, could I mention there are some things that are happening. There, the, CBC is, the CBC has been doing a lot of work on different things. The, um, there's, um, we did a, a project with the Western Development Museum and, and the uh, Melford Museum. And so there's, you look on the Western Development Museum website and they have a whole thing on Dr. Shad there and get more information on him. There's some, information out there in Black and the Prairies. And uh, we're also working with the Heritage Saskatchewan on um, Black and rural people. So there are, there are a lot of things out there that you can find out now more about what's happening in Saskatchewan. And uh, yeah, the, the number two battalion, they're going to be having a, a, the government is going to apologize to them for not treating them well when they returned from the First World War. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, there is another, we also, sh I should mention before <laughs> stopping that the university has more events going on. Um, Carol, you'll be joining us for a panel discussion as well, um, put on by the Black Lives Matter Saskatoon group um, in, uh, partnership with the university. So we have that coming up on the 14th. Um, there are another couple of talks that are happening as well. So the John Schelling helpfully put the link to what else we have going on um, for Black History Month. So if everybody's interested in learning more, um, the provost has a book club and a, and a learning group happening and uh, so if you're interested in joining that, you don't have to have read the whole book. Sometimes it's a little bit intimidating to join a book club because you think I can't read a whole book right now. <laughs> but there are passages and um, videos and things that uh, the provost, Dr. Irene has put together to help on a learning journey to um, just broaden our knowledge about the history of black people on the prairies. So, um, more information about that can be found on the website and that's in the chat there. Um, and yeah, we just have some thank yous coming in. George, would you like to say anything else before we go? No, other than um, uh, once again, thanking Carol. Uh, I knew her from our accomplishments as a, an athlete, a track and field star, but when in December we decided we wanted to host a Black History Month, we kept very, we, we were intimidated because 
it was only a few weeks <laughs> away from February, but uh, I went to look in what is happening in Saskatchewan. And I noticed that uh, Carol was executive director of an organization that has hosted Black History Month. So I connected with her and very quickly, she was very willing to support us in this journey. Uh, and uh, she volunteered to come and give us this education session. And the rest is history. We had a lot of other people working on this. Our deputy provost, um, Paji McDougall was very passionate about this. And then she brought on board um, Charlene, John, and Luke Mura from the library who did an extent, an extent, uh, a wonderful job. So Carol, thank you very much for really supporting us in this. We think we can build uh, to have an even um, bigger and better celebration next year. And hopefully we can celebrate uh, our black African people of that, of African descent uh, more times than the February, but this is a good start. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, George, for your kind words. And thank you, University, for having me. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to share, uh, you know, the history that we know. There's so much more to find out about. And we're doing that. For myself, uh, thank you so much for holding the space today. And like I said, like it's, I feel like this connection, our relationship with the Black community and Black history and just, you don't see me on camera, but I'm an indigenous person. And our connections are probably old and I wish we had more story about that. So thank you for offering what you did. And um, I just wanna encourage others folks this, who really appreciated this generosity and this rich history to notice that it needs to be more than just one month, one month a year. Equality and equitable outcomes is our goal when it comes to anti-racism and anti-oppression. So what does that look like? And then what can you do to take action in that way? So lots of questions. I don't have solutions, but I really appreciate giving me the space to even voice that. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Janelle. That's such an important message. And I agree, it would be wonderful to keep seeing more um, things like this happening at the university and just in general in Saskatchewan. So um, someone asked about the Zoom recording and we will be sharing the recording on um, the website and on our YouTube channel. So for anybody that you know who missed the presentation or who wants to review the presentation, we will be sharing our recording um, in those spaces. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks, Carol. <laughs> I think we'll end it there. If anybody wants to stick around and, and ask any more questions, if you're shy to be on camera or if you wanna, um, you're welcome to do so.